What's up, everyone? I'm glad to be back. I've been away for a little bit. That's because I was moving home, so I got a new house. So I've been setting up everything. You might notice a new studio. I've been setting this up while at the same time wrapping up a big project for a global brand. And now I'm so happy to be back where I feel like I belong, which is with all of you, my fellow web creators. What's up, everyone? I'm Jeffrey at Lightbox. And in this video, I want to revisit an older video I made about where to add CSS on Elementor websites. Because since then, well, my views have changed a bit and I've even changed a lot of how I add my own CSS. I got a new process now. So I want to make a revise or revisited video on adding CSS to Elementor. Now, first off, my inspiration originally came from watching other Elementor tutorials showing all of you to add your CSS in places I felt it should not go, specifically in Elementor widgets. Now, inside every Elementor widget, there is a space to put CSS, but this is a place I fully believe CSS does not belong. And the reason for that is whenever we're adding code to our website, it could be CSS, JavaScript, PHP, whatever kind of code. It should be clean, organized, and centralized. And the problem with adding CSS and Elementor widgets, well, it's none of those. It's all over the place. It gets spread out. Now, it might not be a big deal when you add it to one widget. You might add it to a second widget. But you start to add it to widget to widget, it becomes a big mess. CSS is spread out all over the place. And especially if you're using the selector, like I've seen a lot of tutorials show. That makes using inspect elements a headache right there. What we always want to do is keep all of our CSS in one location, make sure it's clean, and make sure it's organized. That way, if it ever needs to be changed, or if another developer comes in, they can access it quickly. And I'm going to share from personal experience, inheriting a website and fixing one up that has CSS spread out through all the widgets, it's a super big headache because now we're just clicking, 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 trying to locate stuff. And that's where my motivation for that video came from. Now, in my older video, I showed where I add my CSS and my recommendations. And it's an old school way. That would be inside the child theme and that would be in the customizer. Now, the customizer, I always put my CSS there whenever I'm developing a site because it doesn't get cached. And you can see the results right away. Right when you add it in, I could see how it looks on the website. I don't need to save or do anything like that. And then I put it inside the child CSS when it's all finished. That way it's all inside one location. But after making my video, I had a lot of comments and a lot of you were asking me about, hey, did you try this plugin called Code Snippets? And at first I'm like, I, I tried plugins before in the past and I have. It was several years ago I tried using plugins to add my CSS and other code. And well, they were older ones. I, I found like I didn't really need them. So I kind of just dismissed adding plugins. But when several of my fellow web creators are reaching out and saying, hey, check out this plugin. It's pretty dope. We like it. We enjoy it. I got to give it a try. And I got to say thank you to all of you because you guys taught this old dog a new trick. I tried it out and after using code snippets, I ended up getting code snippets pro. I got the lifetime license and I have officially made this part of our stack, my stack and my teams. So now all sites we're building going forward, this is going to be how we implement our code. And the reason why I made this part of our stack is because it ticked off all the boxes It made our code and everything clean organized and centralized and it did it in a more effective way than what i was doing doing in my old school way with the child theme and customizer so i want to go ahead and give just a really quick look into it and show you how it transformed my old school ways into a more productive and easier to use way i'm going to use my personal website for this example right here now here's our website if I go to my customizer and if I go over to my CSS, we're going to see all my CSS here. Now, I like to keep everything organized we have a process with it. We always start with our globals. Uh, then we go into the header. Then we go into the footer. Uh, then we go page by page. That way it's easy to locate anybody like myself or another team member needs to go in and make fixes. It, it's organized. It's easy to find and we can see it right here. Now I want to show you the code that I have added back here. 
I added some custom functions. So I'm gonna go to my theme file editor and you can see here, this is my child theme right here. If we go here to select themes, I got two of them. You got the main theme, you got the child theme. And if you're wondering why even add a child theme and the reason is I could add CSS here and I could add some custom PHP here. And if I were to add this inside the main theme, the parent theme, when there is a theme update, all of that will disappear. Any custom code that I add in there will be gone from the update. So by using the child theme, well, the code stays right there and the main theme gets its update. This kind of just plugs that code into the main theme. So right here, I do have some custom snippets for some functionalities that I added to my site. I have this functionality here, which is removing the toolbar for anybody who's not an admin. That way members and people could visit the website and not see the toolbar up here. I got another function right here. This is adding a CSS class based on if somebody's logged in or not. I have a small little snippet here and this is to fix the video aspect ratio in Gutenberg. So that way the videos show up right. I got another little snippet right here and see each one of these, they're all their own functions right here. And this is how I always did it. But now this is how it's going to look like by using code snippets. It's going to clean it all up. First off, if I go here, this is a testing site, by the way, this is built on my local host. If I go here to customize, you're going to see, I, I don't have anything. It's all cleaned up right there. There's no code inside my customizer and everything still looks the same. So we're all good on that. Let me go ahead and close this. And then I'm going to go to my back end and don't worry about the updates. That's only because it's a clone site right here. But if I were to go to appearance, first off, let me show you my themes. All I have is one theme. Now, if I go over here to my main site, you see, I have to have two themes. I need to have the main theme right here and the child theme. And this is so I could add those custom snippets, but now I don't even need a child theme. And I like that right there. I like keeping things minimal and clean. I love it. All right. So over here, I'll go to code snippets select on this right here and i can see all my snippets right here all my code so first off if let me go ahead and show my main site right now and i go to my customizer so here i got all my globals and this is where i create custom classes and things that could be used throughout the site now right here i got my globals and i could put them all in one spot and i could just keep them inside here so here's all my custom and also at the same time, it looks like a better cleaner code editor. So I got it all right here. Let's go back to all my snippets and right here. I could put my header and footer CSS. I could break it up by page or I could combine it together. However, I want to do it. But what this has done is it makes it a whole lot easier. For example, for posts, for doing single posts, I always write a lot of CSS whenever customizing a blog post because you can't really do that with Elementor. Uh, so in order to make my blog post, they always have a lot of CSS, a lot of customizations. And now if somebody needs to edit, if I need to edit, a team member needs to edit, or if the client leaves, you know, clients do leave, we do move on from each other at times and they hire another developer down the line. How happy are they going to be to jump in here and find, hey, the CSS is right here if they need to change anything in the blog. And now for the PHP, let's go ahead and open this up for comparison. This is the current PHP that I have added in the child theme. Now with code snippets, I have each one of those functions in its own file right here in its own tab. So say I want to make some changes right here inside this one I could go in and make whatever changes I need also if I want to turn off the function I could just click it and turn it off how dope is that it's so much easier it's organized and look at the old school way it was tried and true and it worked it worked great for me for many 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 years but this right here has changed the way that I'm going to be adding my code to websites now there's a lot more that could be done on this there's like exporting the code there's cloning 
there's adding tags there's a lot more even this priority which you could put code on top of the other which one gets top priority we're not going to go too deep into this it's not a full-on tutorial for code snippets and code snippets pro but if you would like to see a tutorial and if i got enough people requesting it then i'll go ahead and make one so make sure to drop it inside the comments if you want to see more on this now there is a free version but the free version is a bit limited like back here, all we can see are the PHP functions and HTML that could be added. Unfortunately, if we want to add JavaScript or CSS, it's got to come with the pro version. Now, there are hacks around this and ways to add CSS. But if you are looking to build websites and if you're going to continuously build websites, this is an investment that I would highly recommend for others. It's one that I made myself and it's not too much. Now, it's nothing to sneeze at, but there is a lifetime deal on it and on the lifetime deal so you can see this is the one i got right here i got the large one because we do build sites and i've i'm committed i've already done my research i'm very careful like one thing about me i'm very prudent when it comes to spending or buying any type of plugin i need to make sure it's a good investment but if you want to just give it a try you could always go at the yearly and look at that 30 bucks a year. That's not too much for a couple of websites. Oh, well, I want to give a big thank you to everybody out there that suggested that I take a look at code snippets. You guys have shown me the light. This has changed how I am going to be adding code to our websites going forward. This is a definite improvement to the old school ways that I was doing it. And that's very important. Now, this is very important to stay open minded and to continuously learn find new ways to be more productive, more efficient. And if I find a tool that helps me to be more productive and more efficient, like Code Snippets Pro did, well, I'm gonna invest in it and I'm gonna make that part of my process. So again, thank you. I'm so happy to be back doing this. Now, I love building websites for clients. I love it, I have fun with it. I built a great business around it, but this right here, this is what I love the most right now. I love connecting with my fellow web creators. So make sure to do all that good YouTube stuff. You know, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I know Yoda back there, he would greatly appreciate it. And I'll be back again soon. All right, thank you.